few days ago, the Holy Spirit showed me numbers 555 and then 911. 555 is also, uh, it is the five senses of humanity. In Revelation chapter 5, the Spirit reveals that the number 5 shows up three times. And so there is meaning here. The meaning is, is 666 regarding is the spirit of man. 555 is the senses of humanity. And so it is the five senses of humanity. And what the Bible says in Ezekiel, I think it's uh, chapter 21, verse 14, that to smite a third time. Smite twice, smite a third time. And so what this is, it's magnified, um, magnified judgment against the five senses of humanity. And here in Revelation chapter 9, we have three fives also. These are the three fives in Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 14. The first one is in uh, verse 1, says, The fifth angel sounded. So this is a time of dispensation. is for 14 years. So it is a smiting of the five senses for um, seven years and seven years. It's for 14 years. It's, it takes on both covenants. Okay? Because God said that he was going to send, he was going to bring all the sins of the ancestry on this final generation. Our forefathers' sins and our own sins in this last generation. So this is where we are right now. We're witnessing the bold judgments. And the coronavirus is um, uh, one of the examples. And in verse 5 says, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment them five months. And the torment was like the torment of the scorpion when he striketh a man. It's stinging rebukes. Okay, God speaks regarding stinging rebukes in the scriptures. In verse 10 of chapter 9, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And so now these are increased. They have breasts now. They have breastplates. Okay, now Aaron's breastplate was magnified uh, five times times two. Five times two. It is also the, the 50 cubits, the dimension of the tabernacle. Okay, and 50 is also the number of Jubilee. So uh, it's the, the judgment is due to the sins done in the covenant, the tabernacle, and, and, and every 50 years is a year also that is a year uh, to bring uh, separation. Okay, that, that's the jubilee, because what, what God does is he positions his chosen ones, the naturally selected from God, he positions them uh, it, within his covenant to be the ones, the forefront, to be the ones that are leading society okay and that way the economy is reset and things are dealt with honestly properly so it's a refreshment of the uh of, the, of society so lucifer also does have his own he does an opposite thing and what happened in 2017 was a jubilee year and the uh, offices of the world that were being you know um given authority is, is, is of the judgment. 17 is, is also a year of separation on a three-year cycle. Okay, there's, once again, the three-year cycles are every three years. So 17, 2020, 2023, they're three-year cycles. And they magnify, okay, this, the, the separation from the wheat and the tares. Now, all these things happen in the exact same years, but God is showing us. He's showing us how he's showing us his, his judgments and how they're working, and we're seeing them manifest. We've had the Jubilee year in 2017, and we've had now this coronavirus in 20, 2020. In 2020. So, um, that's what 555 is. It's, it, it is a, um, a judgment three times. And also, there's, we are in three dimensions, flesh, soul, and spirit. 
So in Isaiah chapter 8, God is speaking regarding right now. God is wanting separation. That's what the coronavirus is all about also. Okay, the coronavirus is not only a, a curse. The Holy Spirit revealed this to me um, approximately a week ago, that, or a week and a half ago or so. I, I don't exactly remember. That the coronavirus is also a blessing. It's not only a curse. God uses, it says in the Bible, that he turns the, uh, the, uh, the blessings, he turns the blessings, uh, in, he turns the curses into blessings. Okay, is what he does. He will turn the curse into a blessing if we humble our hearts you know, before him. And that's what the coronavirus is meant to do. The coronavirus is meant to humble the hearts of the people, to bring the people closer to God. And you see now what's happening is that basically there's so many countries now that are under lockdown. And the lockdown is separation. They're closing schools, they're closing community centers, they're closing all these different places uh, uh, of uh, establishment of community, ga of, of gatherings of people, any like 250. We all, if, if we're looking at the news, we're all informed. We know what they're doing. And what it is, is it is a, uh, a movement of uh, Maple Resolve, Jade Helm, 15. Uh, it is a movement of martial law occupation. Uh, it is militarizing, you know, uh, the, um, the society. It's used for that as well. And it's also uh, used to, um, um, to keep, to control the masses. Okay, it's, it's used for the, uh, uh, to control the economy, con to get the, the, the people more subdued under the, the hand of the beast system. And there's more things about it that, that, that they're doing. There's a, a lot of works that are happening right now. So, in, uh, and we have to be aware of them. What the Holy Spirit has put in my heart also is that I saw the numbers 9-11. Okay, 9-11 is when the towers fell in 2001, uh, the, the, uh, the Trade Center towers in North America. And what the Holy Spirit showed me there, and this is the times we're living in now, okay, 2020, is Psalms 91. In Psalms 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the, the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. This is what he showed me. The destruction that wasteth, that wasteth at noonday. This is 9-11. Now, 9-11 happened in the morning. Uh, the noonday in the Bible represents the sun at its highest peak. And so it's, it's a scorching. It's a scorching that's happening to humanity. And it says that they parade their sin as Sodom. And also in the law, in the Torah, says that if, if, if it happens during the daytime, there's a certain rule, there's a certain law that has to be followed. Because it happened in the daytime. When, when crimes are happening in the daytime, when they're parading their sins as Sodom, and we're seeing that these uh, unlawful acts are being permitted to, to happen in the daytime, uh, we know that the judgment is at its worst possible time. When the judgment takes place at noonday, it is the worst act of crimes. It, is, it, it resembles the, 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 the worst degenerating of the, of, the, of the generations. It's happening right before, you know, in, 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 in the highest peak of the daytime where everybody can see it and, you know, the criminal activity is not afraid. They, they prayed their sins of Sodom. So, uh, and he shall also help, um, he shall also keep you safe from the noisome, from the noisome pestilence, the noisome pestilence. So, um, that's also um, it's also you know loud music, uh, all types of things. Okay, the noisome pestilence. It's also uh, men with microphones as well. Uh, 
that are preaching or, or talking about you know falsehoods that are that are uh, giving out information that is Lucifer, Luciferian in nature. So, in um, Isaiah chapter eight, to live under the shadow of the Most High God, to to be to dwell in the in the secret place of the Most High God and to be secure under the shadow of the Almighty is found in Isaiah chapter 8. And this is what God is saying to the inhabitants right now of the earth. He, he put in my heart to tell the people to fast for 31 days, to take the Bible, read a proverb every day and not sin as much as possible and cry out to God and seek God and meditate on God and ask God how these things apply in our lives. And, you know, he'll, he'll lead us from there, you know, he'll get us into the Psalms, he'll get us, I would say, read the, the Gospel of John, you know, for the church. It's good to read, you know, the first four chapters of Acts, you know, how, the, how they, when they were on fire for God, when the disciples were first began, that ministry began, and they were on fire for God, and they were, they were doing all these things uh, the way we should be acting today, where our minds need to be set, or is, is in Scripture. In uh, Isaiah chapter 8, says that, um, says here in verse 9, Associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. So this is speaking regarding his covenant. This is also speaking regarding those who are not in his covenant. And, and, and you see how he, God repeats this. He says, associate yourselves, you shall be broken in pieces. Associate yourselves. And uh, it says, uh, uh, gird yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. And so God speaks regarding the first age, the second age, and, and, all, and the entire whole of society. In verse 10 says, Take counsel together, and it will, not, it will come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. And so, Isaiah is speaking regarding the remnant. He's speaking regarding the first fruits. So, what, what, what God is saying is to not associate yourselves, to disassociate, to, be, to excommunicate yourselves. And this is the time to do it. This is the blessing of the coronavirus. Um, another blessing for the coronavirus is what God is saying is that the next exodus is going to be in heaven. So when we see that the economy is taken away, uh, we're being liberated. So it is, it's also a time to rejoice. It is a time to seek God. And it's a time to be involved in the supernatural with God. And we, can, we all partake. In verse 19 says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, unto wizards that peep, and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? So what society is doing, society is seeking from the dead to go to the living. Well, what God is saying is you must go from the living, you must receive from the living, from the water, of giving water, from the true well of water, from the Holy Spirit of God, and then give that to the dead. And then our countenance changed. Then our purpose in life changes. And then we're supping from the real well. And then we become uh, sure of our transcendency. We have a transcendency that is for all eternities. In verse 20 it says, To the law and to the testimony. So we must, we must uh, seek God uh, to go to the living. To be the living that go to the dead to be the living that go to the dead, to the law of God, to the testimony of Jesus Christ. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead in, and hungry. This is the times of famine, the time of pestilence, the time of war, and the time of destruction. And we are now presently in the four corners, in the midst of the four corners of the earth, fourfold manifest bowl judgment right now. All these things are happening. And they shall pass through it. Hardly be, 
be, be sad and hungry. Jesus Christ walked through this perfectly because he was only led of the Holy Father. And he says that as the, God, as, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. So these are those who are shaking their fists at God. And this also includes the five foolish virgins. And the Holy Spirit has me using this verse predominantly right now also for the Mormon religion and all other religions, especially those who, who testify and speak regarding Jesus Christ and the five foolish virgins of Christianity and all of Catholicism also, um, simply because they're not they're not disciples of Christ. They belong to Catholicism, though they do have a Holy, the Holy Spirit in parts. And uh, I was just um, looking today, very, very uh, interesting in the news, there was just a headline that I read that Catholicism, that, that Europe is turning into paganism. And, and uh, you see how, how um, Italy right now is being hit really hard with the coronavirus, with this, with this, um, with this pestilence. And that is also because they also persecute Christianity and, and, and they're, they're turning into paganism now, which is, which is uh, uh, all, those, all these things you see that, it's, that everything is rising to the surface, to the ends of the earth. And of course, also in Iran, where the Ayatollah is, is, uh, is suffering right now because they're persecuting the children in Iran. There's a great Christian movement there right now and God is saying to let my people go. In verse 21, so in verse 21, they will pass through it. Everybody passes through it. Hardly be sad and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, and they shall, shall fret themselves and curse, uh, and curse, they shall, when they are hungry, when they shall be hungry, when they're seeking for God, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven into darkness. This is the time of the end. This is when the sealing is complete. This is when the door of the ark is shut. And the only way to get into the ark these days is to have a likeness of Noah. And that was in any time. But no, not in the days of Noah, but in, this, in these days, is to get... Is to, you have to be in a likeness of Noah, and Noah was used of God. Uh, he was a first fruit. And so God is showing me, is showing us that this is what the times we're living in today, the times of, uh, the, um, of, of getting ourselves ready with God, to lock ourselves in, okay, to, to hide ourselves for a while. And because now is the time to do it, to take um, time away from society, to not to get away from all group affiliations and associations, and just be together with God. And that's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to speak regarding. I want to get into some other things uh, regarding the. I have notes over here. Coronavirus, it is, uh, right, I want to talk regarding the Jade Helm 15. Maple Resolve is another word for it. And also in France, this is the Beast Computer, they also have it in France. When I was in a France airport, I think it was in 2015, I noticed a drill they were doing. And it was the same as the Jade Helm 15 uh, system that they, that they were doing, that they uh, publicly went uh, forward in um, North American society and told them that they were implementing a, a, a jade, that they were doing a testing, drills of testing, Jade Helm 15. They did the same, they're doing the same thing in Canada. It's called Maple Resolve. In France, they did the same thing in an airport. I was there and I was, we were uh, just walking into the terminal area uh, where, the, where they have the tickets where you go to get the, the airplane tickets and purchase tickets and, and uh, put your luggage, uh, um, where they take your luggage and and I was walking I, I noticed there was a group of uh, military men half of them were in military garb 
the other half uh, in military vestment, and then the other half were in street clothes. And they were just standing there facing each other. And there was no word spoken. And as we were walking by, one of them in the street, in, in street clothes, they started walking towards the military. And then they broke, they broke the drill and it was done. And so witnessing this, uh, we just kept walking. Uh, witnessing this, um, uh, they, they um, you know, I was just thinking in my, my, my mind, is, what is that? I was asking the Lord, like, what is that? He, he showed me it was a drill. It was a drill. Well, it was obviously a drill. But, uh, you know, and then it was after that, not right away, but it was after that, where he showed me it is the Jade Helm 15 drill. It is the same uh, computer system. It is, they, it's algorithms put into a system. And it is a beast system. It's a, it's a prophetic system that works with AI algorithms and the spirits of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. And that's what the Holy Spirit uh, showed me um, here in Calgary also uh, when uh, I was um, ministering at the, especially at the sick parade. They have the units there and they're doing surveillance. It's all surveillance, it's all information gathering. All the information that is gathered, even all the, um, regarding influenza, just the, the common flu as you would call it, that it does mutate every time, but uh, just the flu itself. Um, how people are, uh, it, it takes all of the, the stats, takes all the data, all the treatments, um, you know, those that get treated, those that don't get treated, um, you know, it takes all the information and it puts it into the computer system. And the computer system is a prophetic computer system that prophesies how the people will respond. And so what it does is it gives the military uh, the, uh, the upper hand of crowd control. That's what it is. And that's exactly what they're doing with all these lockdowns. Now they can lock down a whole country uh, without, and they can do it very quickly. And so that's what they're using, that's what they're uh, doing with the coronavirus, is they're implementing that. And they're positioning the, the New World Order, the Phoenix, to rise while they're doing it. That's what it's for, it's for crowd control. And it's also for population control, ultimately. And uh, it, it is for a military takeover. And uh, as I ate, God wants separation, and the world wants separation, you know. Uh, so the world wants to be separated from, from the elect of God, from the, from, from the church, from the, from the elect, from the Word of God. And the church, you know, the Word of God wants to be separated away from the world. The coronavirus helping to wake up uh, sleepy virgins, uh, the five virgins in Revelation of uh, the, the, the uh, foolish virgins. And the wise virgins, because they, they, they all fell asleep. And the next exodus is in heaven. We must run to our post to pray. And that's what God has is, God is revealed here regarding these things. Uh, extremely important to understand the times today that we're living in. The video, the last video, I believe, to me, it, it is extremely important. It is extremely edifying. The information is correct. There is no lie. There is no false interpretation. The information is 100% accurate. And that's my office. That's been my office since 2006. I've been locked in for over 14 years with the Holy Spirit, studying the scriptures, meditating on God, praying to God, doing my street ministry, and doing my office ministry, and studying the Word through the Holy Spirit of God. That's what he showed me. It, four, over 14 years of doing that. So uh, I know uh, how to walk with God. I know uh, when, when God leads me. I know when God shows me revelation. Okay, I've, I've been trained to know that. And one of my gifts is my ordinations is interpretation of angelic tongues. The scriptures are written with angelic tongues. Uh, I've had people laugh at me regarding that, but the scriptures is written through angelic tongues. And um, it's only through the sermon of that tongue, it's only through discernment, having the mind of Christ, of the fourth dimension, is the scriptures, the depth of the scriptures, even the, you know, the shallower parts of the scriptures, uh, and I say shallow, 
meaning that there's different layers. There's the first layer, the second layer, the third layer, and the fourth layer of interpreting Scripture. And the first layer is, is easy. Jesus Christ died for us. He loves us. And he rose from the dead. He's coming back very soon. That's the physical flesh. But that knowledge itself cannot save us because it's only from the physical. It's not from the spiritual. It's not given to the spiritual. Or, or to, the, to the spiritual. It's only given to the physical to understand that. It's the odor of God. Uh, but it's, it's only when the Holy Spirit is in, is, is in us and we're born again and we're interpreting through the Spirit and, and the Spirit of God is working through us where we are being uh, imparted with the blessings of transcendency, the transcendency of Jesus Christ that brings us into everlasting uh, uh, glorification and habitation. So uh, this is very exciting. In Ezekiel um, 21 verse 14, very exciting. Uh, thou therefore, son of man, prophesy and smite thine hands together. Let the sword be doubled a third, t doubled uh, the third time. The sword of the slain. It, uh, it is a sword of the great men that are slain, which entereth into their privy chambers. And so this means that they are locked in in their own devices. It's six six six. They're locked in. In uh, Revelation sixteen eleven says they they do not repent. They still don't repent. The bowls are being poured out right now. And, and there's great, uh, there's devastation happening to the spiritual condition, and they're not repenting. And then these will manifest physically, and they're still not repenting. And uh, a lot of it is because of the drugs, the ecstasy, uh, that, that uh, or is it, uh, what's it called again, um, crystal meth. It makes a person break out, and they're not repenting. And even those that are, uh, help, they're, they're, um, you know, this drug trading, this, this world system, you know, that, that permits all of these things. Uh, people seeing these things happening, they still don't repent of all these things that are happening. You see, so you see how these these um, things creep up on us. They, they they come like a thief, the judgments of God, because they happen before our eyes, but we do not recognize them. So this is what the Holy Spirit has been wanting me to speak regarding uh, the times we're living in today, and I want to get to the uh, some. Uh, I want to get to the, um, uh, to the notes. Father, I just thank you for this time that you've given me to utter. I, I pray, Father, that the hearers are edified. I pray, Lord, that they're going to meditate on these words. They're going to meditate on, on your things, and they're going to do what you require them to do. I pray, Father, that, that we, we fall on our faces, we get on our knees, we go to our posts, and we pray to our Heavenly Father. And there you will hear us, Father, when we pray and reach out to you with all our hearts and mind and strength, when we dwell into the Scriptures, when we ask you to show us the scriptures when we take the scriptures and we compare them to our own lives. Father, that you reveal to us and that you bless us, impart in us your knowledge, show us the signs of the times, bring us into everlasting habitation. Father, give us joy, give us victory, open up our eyes so that we can know the truth. Uh, you sent your spirit for us, Father, and we pray to receive your spirit in abundance. We pray to get to the next level with you. We pray for understanding of the times and for your, and for your, for your help, Father, for your for your word to abide in us and to multiply and magnify your salvation within us, Father. And we just pray for open hearts, for our minds, for our, for our families, for our children. Father, we pray, Father, for all those who are still yet to receive the Holy Spirit, Father. We extend intercession to, for them, Father, that, that when they think and meditate on these things, when people lay hands on them, Father, that they're going to receive a blessing, that they're going to receive an impartation, they're going to make an agreement with you, Father. You're going to bring them, you're going to draw them, and you're going to bless them, Father, we pray. We pray for a great harvest, Father. We pray to be ready for that harvest. We, we, we pray to prepare ourselves for Isaiah chapter 60, 1 to 4, and Isaiah chapter 61, 1 to 4. We pray, Father, be worthy to bring fruits, Father, that are uh, to you, that, that will have fruits before you, that we can bring you gifts, Father, the fruit of our lips and other souls. We can bring them before you and present them uh, to you and that they be blessed, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you open up our hearts, show us the truth in these times that we're living in today. Let us not be deceived, Father. Let us not trust in the, in the medication of the world. Let us not trust in, uh, in, 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 in the things of the world to bring us healing, Father, but let us, let us let us focus on Jesus Christ. Let us receive our healing from the Holy Spirit, Father. Uh, a, a healthy, healthy spirit heals the bones, Lord God. 
Um, and we pray for that. We pray for your healing. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come into us from the four winds of heaven. Father, we pray your breath inside of us and others and that they receive healing, that we receive healing, Father, in our minds, that we re receive healings, Father, that all our sins go into remission before you and that we are open, that you breathe upon us, Father, remove all the chaff, remove all the things that are not uh, that are blocking, remove all the things that are darkening, remove all the things that are hardening, remove all the things that are, that are causing us to stumble, Father. Open us up and show us these things that we will, so we will act on these things. Not that we may, but Father, that, that we may because we are permitted to. But Father, that we are certain that uh, we have received and we're certain, Father, uh, before you and, and that our resolve before you is true and genuine. Our repentance is real. Our broken hearts and contrite spirits testify before you. And Father, we pray for the will to carry, to carry out your word within us, that we will carry out. We will prove ourselves to you as being re reliable, as being faithful, ambassadors to Jesus Christ, Father, that we are worthy to rise up at this time and glorify your name. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.